Today we're going to be talking about all of the modifications done to the new Satvan 2.0. What's going on everyone, back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today I am finally bringing you guys a overview of the new and improved Satvan 2.0. If you've been following along to the recent videos, you will know that the van sort of went under the knife over the past two weeks or so down in Southern California. I have added quite a bit of functionality to the van and I have been putting it to the test. As of right now, I'm sitting on top of Hunter Mountain just outside of Death Valley down here behind the van. I was able to put pretty much every modification to the test on this little trip that I've been doing and I will be continuing to test everything over the next couple of weeks, months, years. You guys know how it goes. Now everything that I've done to the van puts function first, although cosmetically and aesthetically speaking, it definitely looks a lot better. Not everything done though can you see on the surface, so we're gonna take sort of a deep dive in here, open things up, and I'm gonna give you guys a first hand look at everything done to the van. There's gonna be a lot of information packed into this little video, so if you guys want sort of a build list, so to speak, I will leave that in the description down below, as well as links to the two companies that I teamed up with to make this happen. So let's head over to the front of the van, and I guess we'll just sort of work our way backwards. Now in no particular order, up front here happens to be the first mod that I've ever done to the van, and that is the Backwoods Adventure Mod front bumper. This thing is giving me serious protection from anything that I may run into off-road, and inside there I also packed a worn VR10 series winch. I have not had to use this winch on myself, but if you've been following along on this cross-country journey, you will know that I pulled a friend of mine out of a dried lake bed, so it's definitely come in handy once or twice. Also inside this Backwoods Adventure Mod bumper, I have packed it with rigid lights. On the outside, I'm running Rigid's D-Pro Spotlights and Floodlights as well. I'm basically using these as fog lights and just accessory lights. And then right up front and center, I have a 20-inch light bar. And let me tell you, this thing is blinding. Definitely off-road use only when turning that on. Speaking of off-road use only, up top, this is another accessory that I added when I was visiting the guys at Agile Off-Road down near San Diego. We've also added a 50-inch light bar to the wind fairing on top of the van. This thing is currently covered up with the rigid tint across the top because legal purposes. And the reason for me adding the 50 inch light bar on top is because when I'm in desertous areas like this or off-road at night for any reason, the lights down here definitely work great and are effective. However, when you have low-lying brush, sort of like what you see around here, the lights tend to not travel quite as far. So putting that 50 inch light bar up on the roof has definitely helped a lot and it definitely lights up the surroundings, I'll just say that much. Now we also have some really cool stuff going on under the hood here, probably the coolest stuff that I've done to the van, but for now, let's just go over the stuff that you can see from the outside. Next up, and probably the thing that you guys wanna know about most is, of course, the custom suspension package that I've added to the van. Now this is going to be a lot of information all at once, and again, I'll be leaving a build list and links in the description down below. So most of the mods from here on out were installed by Agile Off-Road, and I of course went with the Agile Rip Kit. This kit includes a rear Fox 2.0 shock, which is custom built for Agile. This is actually their own part designed by Fox. It's a SKU that only they sell. To go along with those shocks, we've also upgraded the leaf springs to 4700s in the rear. Up front, we have the Agile Max Auxiliary Kit with upgraded Bilstein shocks and Coney struts, which is just about as good as it gets coming from Agile. Included in the cost of the rip kit, we also have 16 millimeter wheel spacers to poke those things out just a little bit further, widen out the stands, and also some Pro Series coil savers to keep the dust down, of course. Now this is the modification that I was definitely most excited for because I have been taking the van off-road quite a bit and on stock sprinter suspension, it does okay. Mercedes has some really good four-wheel drive. However, when the van is loaded up with a ton of gear and you're going on some really off-camber stuff and it gets kind of rocky and bumpy, things tend to sway and fly around. The rip kit definitely solves that problem. It was extremely nice coming up here, probably off-road for about four hours yesterday, and I was just impressed time and time again. I can take a lot of features off-road much quicker than I was able to before, and I don't have to worry about things rattling around. The rip kit itself is really designed for ride improvement. However, it does give you more ground clearance as well. 
So with the rip kit, I also decided to upgrade the tires. Previously, I was running BFG KO2s and I still am, just a little bit bigger this time. Now I have 275 70s on here. I think if you're doing any type of off-roading in a van like this, bigger tires is probably the first thing that I would do if I could do it all over again. This has made my life much better already. The lifespan of the KO2s is phenomenal. I have them on pretty much all my vehicles. And with the rip kit and the 275s, we're now sitting about three inches is higher than we were previously. From the ground to the top of my AC unit in the back, we're sitting at about 10 foot two inches, and then you may notice the Wii Boost antenna up there, which we'll talk about in a second. And to the very top of that, we're looking at about 10 feet, 10 inches, so. The van is very tall, if you can't tell on camera. Now, while we're on the topic of tires, might as well show the Agile rear tire carrier on here. I, of course, have the same tire mounted up because now that I have 275s, if I were to get a flat and had to change out to the spare sort of donut style tire, it wouldn't be too fun driving like that. So on the back here, I've also added another wheel, full size spare, and these are actually Method race wheels. They are the 301 standards. I definitely like these wheels a lot. However, I think in the future that's something I may swap out, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. You'll also notice on the back here that I've cleaned things up quite a bit. I got rid of that hideous ladder that was back here that I previously had the Max Tracks mounted to. The pros and cons with that ladder is that pros were I could take it off the back door and move it around the van to get up to whatever point I wanted to reach on the van. However, you can't climb it while it's mounted to the back door because it leaves dents. So pardon me for not being able to clean up the van, but on top here, underneath that new accessory light in the rear, there's like a tiny little dent scratch from me climbing the ladder when I'm not supposed to. Instead, I decided to go with an Illuminous side ladder right here, and let me tell you, I am stoked on this thing. Not only does it look really cool, but it is also way more functional than the old ladder. It is crazy sturdy compared to the other one, and it is positioned in such a way that it sort of follows the lines of the van. It comes right in line with the pop-out on the rear. I thought maybe it might add a little bit of wind noise, and I can say that it absolutely has not. I don't even notice it's there unless I'm looking at my mirror and see it. Now let me actually take you guys up to the roof and show you why this ladder placement is much better. As you can see the ladder mounts directly into the rails here. It is insanely sturdy and it puts me in the perfect position to clean my solar panels, maintain everything up here, making sure that they're all plugged in. I have access to all of the vents up here in case I need to create any better seals or anything like that. And then of course, right here on my right, I've relocated my Max Tracks. I actually used some mounts from Agile Off-Road. Took my old previous pins, put them in there. I of course have these locked up, but now they're in a position where I can very easily come up here, take these pins off and pull those down if I ever need them. They're gonna be a little bit easier to access and it makes the look much, much cleaner. You'll also notice the Wii Boost antenna right here on a little spring. Hopefully I don't snag that on trees in the future because it is so tall. And I'll talk about my experience with that once we get into the interior. If you caught one of the previous videos when I was visiting Agile Off-Road, you'll know that we added a third ZAMP solar panel up here. Agile actually makes the hardware to make this setup exactly how you see it right here. And it is super clean. I'm already running two ZAMP solar panels with the solar controller inside. So adding a third of the same panels makes things very, very easy. Now, one last thing that I've done to the exterior is right back here. We added a little bit more ground clearance, probably yet another inch, because previously I was smashing up the stock exhaust when I was driving off-road. You'll notice here that the side steps are a little bit scratched up and they were actually more scratched up but we cut about four to five inches off of the end here, and that gave us enough room to actually raise the exhaust hangers. So the exhaust is up about an inch over stock, and we also cut that tip because that thing was all dented to hell, and it looks way better this way. Now I think that covers just about everything for the outside that you guys can actually see, so let's move to the interior. Now the first thing we will look at or try to look at on the interior are these SeaTac battery chargers found right here underneath the passenger seat. I'm definitely no pro when it comes to electrical systems like this, however I can give you a brief description of what it does. It helps me gain a lot more power and retain a lot more power here in the van. 
So essentially what it does is it makes the solar on the roof much more efficient at charging the house batteries. Right now I'm currently still on the AGM batteries. I had no reason to switch out to lithium quite yet because that is very expensive and these batteries are still working fine. In the future, once these batteries get to the end of their lifespan, I will of course do a lithium upgrade but that's not gonna be for another like year or two. So the SeaTech not only helps with the solar, but also when driving the van, it's going to take more power from the alternator and just use it much more efficiently. I believe the figures went from about 30 amps while driving up to 130, don't quote me on that. But I can definitely tell you that when I'm driving the van now, I'm gaining much more power than I ever was before. So not only do I have a little over 300 watts of solar on the roof, but I also have this souped up battery charger and I have not had any issues with power whatsoever. I pretty much never have to plug the van in anymore. Moving right along inside here, driver's side cabinet. This is typically where I keep all of my filming gear. Got my drones, extra batteries, lenses. And this is also where we have mounted up the WeBoost. This is the WeBoost Drive XRV, and I was really skeptical about this system at first. I ordered this kit on Amazon and the kit came very complete. It had extra antenna lengths and cables and zip ties, everything you could possibly need. And the way I currently have this set up is of course with the short antenna on the roof because I don't need to add an extra foot of length to the already super tall van. We have it routed down through a grommet in the front of the roof here, all super professionally done thanks to the people at Agile Off-Road. And then we have it routed inside here to this cabinet where the actual booster lives and the antenna henna lives as well. I can move this thing around the van if need be, but since the van is only like 19 foot bumper to bumper, I really don't have to do that. The WeBoost is also hardwired into the electric. That way I do not have to use a standard wall outlet. This thing can always be on if I want it to be. It doesn't draw a whole lot of power. And if I ever want to turn it off, I'll simply pull the plug and unplug it. Now again, this is something that I was real skeptical about. I'm like, what does this thing really do? Is it gonna help me get reception when there is no reception? And the answer to that is sort of no, but also maybe it's all super dependent. I can say though that it definitely works. It will take whatever signal you're getting from whatever service provider you have, whether it's Verizon, AT&T, or whatever. It'll take what signal you have and it will absolutely make that signal better. That being said though, if you are in an area like we are right now, sitting out here above Death Valley, I have absolutely no reception here. The Wii Boost is on and I have absolutely no service with Verizon. I did just test this with AT&T though and the AT&T phone has no service at all, but when I plug that in, we get about two bars of 4G. So it's gonna be really situational depending on where you're at. I can say though that it does work. If I leave this thing on when I'm driving in a place that has good reception or even mediocre reception, if there's 4G at all, this thing is going to boost that signal and it's going to be very, very strong. That of course is super important to me because I'm uploading videos from the van while I'm on the road. I've yet to upload a video through that, but I'm definitely looking forward to it because my internet speeds are way faster than they were previously. So far, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up, but I will report back in the future if this thing really comes in handy. Now let's move right up here to the driver's seat for two modifications that you can't really see, but I'll see if I can get a camera angle of them later. So right up here, we've wired the Mercedes-Benz switches to do a few different things. Right here is the light bar, 50 inch light bar on the roof. I've wired all my other lights down to switches down here. And then two more modifications and probably the coolest ones that I've added, an ARB twin air compressor and an engine circulation pump. So let's first talk about the ARB compressor. I mentioned earlier that one of the first mods that I would do to a van like this if I was actively taking it off-road was tires. Now the second thing, possibly even before a suspension upgrade, would be the ARB compressor. Airing down tires when you are getting off-road makes such a huge difference. This is my first vehicle that has something like that equipped and I've only used it once yesterday, but holy it makes a huge, huge difference. Right here is a little accessory. These are Coyote tire deflators. Basically, you set the pressure on these things, screw it onto the valve stem, and then you pull that pin and it'll go 
let all the air out down to the desired pressure that you have these set for. I have all of these set for roughly 25 PSI. So I aired down the tires yesterday as soon as we hit the washboard road heading up to the mountain and it made a huge difference. I'm at 25 PSI in both the front and the rear and it's like driving on clouds or like big squishy marshmallows. When you air down a tire, of course, it's going to sort of squish out like this. You're gonna get more surface area and in turn more grip. We've been driving through sand and loose rock and all sorts of stuff and it's been great. The van definitely does not rattle quite as much because of that. And now once I leave here, I've got about a two hour drive on a dirt road. And once I get back to civilization, I'll simply pull over, pop on the ARB compressor and inflate all of the tires. We have a port up front in the engine bay for my front two tires. And then in the rear, right next to the hitch, we have another port. I simply hook up the orange air hose, pop that thing on there. It'll automatically fill. And then after about two minutes, I should pop that off and I'll be good to go. So if you're gonna be driving off-road, I would highly recommend figuring out a way to air down your tires, whether it's an onboard compressor like that or even a little 12 volt compressor that you just keep in the back. And now how about that engine circulating pump? What is that thing for? Now this is a modification that I decided on pretty last minute while I was at Agile Off-Road. I wanted to get the van ready for the winter because of course I'm going to be living in here probably in the Pacific Northwest and in Colorado, places where there's going to be a lot of snow and it's going to be cold. I've already got the power situation figured out because of the SeaTech battery charger. We got extra solar on the roof, so power should not be an issue. However, I probably will be more power consuming in the winter time because I'm gonna be running the heater to heat the air in the back of the van as well as the hot water. Now the Winnebago Revel uses an S-Bar heating system. It's a hydronic heating system, so there's a little furnace that sort of heats up coolant and that stuff is pumped throughout the van. It keeps the fresh and gray water temp tanks from freezing and then that hot coolant will also sort of be pumped into radiators with fans blowing over them which heats the rest of the interior here. It can pump water through the radiator along the hot coolant which gives you instant hot water so if I have the heater running I can turn on my fresh water 21 gallons and it can all be hot water from start to finish. It's a really cool system and if you're looking into building a van I would highly recommend checking it out. They're pretty efficient. Mine runs off of a diesel drip but all of that stuff is besides the point. So another really cool and useful modification that you guys can't really see is that we took the S-Bar heating system, which was typically under the driver's side footboard, and we've relocated it into the engine bay. Now with these S-Bar heating systems, you do have to service them every once in a while. They typically have like a two year lifespan before you actually need to service it. It of course really depends on how much you are using the heat. So basically you need to pop the whole thing open and service it. You need to change out gaskets. There's also a tiny little fuel filter in there that you have to change. Here's a comparison of an old one to a new one. Luckily while I was at Agile, I figured out how to do this. They actually showed me how to do it for the future. And now that it's in a place that is very accessible, it's going to be easy for me to service that in the future. But that's not the only reason for it. The relocation allowed us to also tie in another heat exchanger. So what's on the other side of that exchanger? That's actually engine coolant. So now this is going to get a little bit technical, but if you're understanding me so far, let's just jump right into this. As I'm driving the van around, say in a really cold climate, maybe 20 degrees outside where the water in here could freeze. The van's obviously very cold. I can have the heater on for the actual chassis of the van itself, but I don't always wanna be running the heat back there because I'm gonna be using all of my energy. As the hot coolant from the engine is circulating through that heat exchanger, on the other side of that exchanger is the coolant for the whole S-Bar system. So now the engine is also heating the rest of the coolant for the back of the van. So as long as the engine is at temperature, it's going to be keeping my water from freezing. If I turn the system on back there, I can have hot water and warm air. So it's gonna be taking the heat from the engine and just sort of dispersing it throughout the rest of the van, which is so cool. It may not seem cool to some of you out there, but trust me, this is a game changer for sure. So now if I'm driving somewhere up into the mountains and it's zero degrees out, I can just drive like normal, don't have to worry about anything freezing, and then I park for the night. Now I can simply walk to the back and turn the system on like normal. The regular S-Bar system will fire up and I'll have hot water and everything will be cool. Now there's even more functionality to it. 
Say I sleep through the night, I have the heat on, so the air is warm, the hot water is there if I need it. I'm waking up in the morning and I'm going to go drive to the mountain to go ski for the day. As you probably know, starting a diesel vehicle in the extreme cold is not the easiest thing. It's not great for the engine. However, with that heat exchanger, now five or 10 minutes before I decide that I wanna start driving, I'll come up here and actually flick that engine circulating pump. We've added another pump under there which will actually take the engine coolant side and start circulating it through the engine. So now the heater that's been on all night is super hot, all of the coolant is really warm. Now that circulation pump is pumping warm coolant through the engine, getting it up to temperature or at least a little bit above freezing before I actually go and start the van. So dual purpose, well there's actually a lot of purposes to the SPAR relocation and that's just something that I've been nerding out about. It is super cool and I'm looking forward to getting the most out of that thing during the freezing winter months. Now, last but not least, this is something that I've already shown in the video and everything that we've already covered here today has been pretty much off-road focused. This is not technically off-road focused, but it is a game changer for sure. It has completely changed how living in a van like this is done. So here I have my garage lounge storage system from Canyon Adventure Vans. If you guys wanna check out an in-depth video of this whole storage lounge system back here, you can check the link right up here in the corner. I will say that I've been using it for the past two or three days now and I love it. It took my storage space from what I was at pretty much 100% capacity down to 75% capacity. And I've also added more things in here like a microwave. We've been cooking with the microwave for the past two nights and it makes things way easier. You combine that with the induction cooktop in there and you can have a full meal ready in just a couple of minutes. I have my bike mounted on this cargo tray right here which slides out and holds up to like 200 some pounds. It allows me to get the bike out of here without messing around with the bed. I can also work on things right here, loop the chain, clean things off after a long ride. And you could put anything here as well. I got ski boots. In the winter time, I'll be throwing my skis here instead. Everything is nice and easy and customizable, accessible, and then when you don't need it, simply pop those tabs and slide it back into place. There's also the Laguna table, which is great for having dinner for two. You could probably fit four there if you wanted to. And then of course I've added the Canyon Adventure Vans six inch mattress with the three inch bolsters. Have the bed risers on each side which give you even more storage. And previously I would never put my bed up to the ceiling like that, but now with the GLSS here, I'm doing that pretty much every day at this point. It adds a whole nother dimension to the van that was previously pretty much unused. It was just a dirty junk storage garage where I would throw everything in there. Now everything has a place and it's probably one of my favorite things that I've done to the van. So I believe that covers pretty much everything for the new and improved Satvan 2.0. If you guys have any questions at all, you can let me know in the comments down below. Again, I'm gonna be leaving links to Agile Off-Road and Canyon Adventure Vans because that is where I've done most of this work. You can find links to their websites and then sort of like a build list in the description down below. Now the only thing left to do is to get out there and enjoy the van and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So if you guys wanna see these systems put to the test a little bit more, like the WeBoost, the suspension, the air system, everything else here, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week and you can also check out the van playlist because I am traveling quite a bit as of lately. That's going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.